the rainbow flag was not about like it wasn't like each color represented some sexuality it was rainbow because it was everyone the under the rainbow be comfortable with who you are yeah everyone is accepted is it not fitting that that acceptance had been systemically erased that's yeah actually when you put it that way it's pretty wild as they took over this identity and begin to marginalize the actual individuals who fought to normalize all of it. Here's this flag for how everyone matters. And then they're like, but some people do matter more than others. Let's put yeah. some stripes on here for black and brown people. Let's put some stripes on here. Let's put a big section on here for the trans community. Even for asexual. It's fucked up. It is genuinely yeah. fucked up and disturbing the way that the progressives had basically stabbed the gay rights movement in the back and then carved up its corpse and then wear it like some sort of macabre outfit. They've done the same to the black community. <laughs> Fucking horrifying. And it's the same that we've seen with the, the gay community. They have taken their identity away from them and said, this identity supports us. And if mm. you don't support us, then you no longer have ownership over your own identity. Would you like to know more? So Malcolm, what do you want to talk about today? The gays. The gays. Today we're talking about the gays. Okay. And what happened to their culture, which I think is really cruel and twisted. And uh, so a lot of people, you know, they, they watch our podcast. And they may not realize how fully integrated both you and I were with early LGBT culture. Mm. When I say integrated, you know, I lived in a boarding school since I was 13. Every year in high school, except for one year, my roommate was a gay guy. And he was my best friend. So this means throughout high school, the room I was sleeping in and my best friend who I hung out with a good 90% of all of my social interactions was a gay man. And I was in the GSA and I was really, really, really engaged with gay culture. And then in college, again, my best friend and my academic father was a gay man. People don't know academic father. It's sort of like your, it's St. Andrews. It's mentor, like a student mentor. Student mentor, right? And for a good chunk of my formative years in life, the person who I spent the most time with, talked the most to, and engaged with was a gay man. And so uh, a lot of people are like, Malcolm, you have a lot of gay mannerisms. Why is that? And it was like, because I hung out with like, them all the time and their friend group. And like that was my core friend group growing up, was gay men. And a lot of men today, now gay culture was very different back when I was growing up. They'll look at this and they'll be like, oh, why would you do that? And I was like, you want to get a lot of hot female tail? Have all of your friends be hot gay men because women hit on them. They're not interested and they pass them off fairly frequently. I'm not saying this is why they were my friends. I actually went to a high school reunion and I was interested in meeting with everyone. And I ended up only talking to this guy again because after i started meeting all the other people i was like oh this is why i only talk to you you're the only like sentient interesting person at the school in my year you know but anyway well yeah and of course i grew up in the san francisco bay area yeah. so the only two parades i ever went to were the pride parade and the fourth of july parade in my small town but the, the san francisco pride parade of course and most of my friends had lesbian mothers so i just thought people married it, like gender had no influence over who you married that I was equally likely to marry a woman as I was to marry a man it just didn't yeah well and when in growing up everyone thought you were gay because oh yeah you wanted yeah to my parents live with would a woman they would always say Simone will love whatever man or woman you end up with and I wonder if they were kind of disappointed in you because you weren't a woman you know, we, we, and you, yeah, well, we, yeah, right. No, no, I think they they kind of were because at one point you told another girl in your class that you wanted. No, no, to no, it went. No, no, no. This was this was like in the second grade or so, and mm -hmm. in public school, I announced at one point that I was going to marry my best friend, who was a girl, and we were going to live in an RV and have a hundred cats. And no one took away the problem that I was apparently going to be a very dangerous hoarder of cats as an adult and be homeless, apparently. Oh, I'm sorry. Live hashtag van life. They were more concerned about the fact that I had apparently just come out of the closet 
in the second grade. Hello. I am glad the trans movement didn't exist when you were a kid because you yeah, would have been they probably been, yeah. in a hot second. Yeah, it's like, oh, we got it. Well, because then at that point, I I didn't, I thought nothing of this. I, I said it at some point during the day. And then I come home and my mom's like, oh, you know, Simone, we need to talk about this because apparently my teachers had called home and there was this whole meeting about that I had just come out of the closet. I had no idea because- I was in the second grade. It just happened to be that my best friend's parents were also lesbians and that most of the people I knew were like in some kind of alternative relation. I mean, my parents were poly before they got married. It just, hello. anyway, so no, I, I, I never had lesbian tendencies. I just, I, I've always been asexual, but gay for you. And I, it well, just- she means by that is she's never found anyone else attractive. Yeah. And then suddenly I met, met you and I was- so so hot for you that despite being an insane germ phobe i wonder if anyone else is gay for just me like is, uh, how, how common that is to to only find one person arousing i really i do wonder that I, we, in all of our research on sexuality we haven't found good data on this but let's go back to the gay community yeah to the gays to the gays well so this is important because like my core network, as I said, was GSA, the theater kids. I was like an alt scene kid in the early days was those two core. Oh, and the, I don't know what to call it. It was like this community of like thrift store and knitting girls. What? We grew up in our time period, maybe not where you were, but on the East Coast, it was definitely a thing. These okay. are girls who wore everything from thrift stores and then would knit as like No, a I mean, I had friends like that, but they weren't primarily lesbian. That- no, I'm not saying they were lesbian. It was like a community and the community had a lot of lesbians in it. No. But anyway, or or bi girls or whatever. Hmm. The early gay community and the early LGBT community differentiated. So we're going before our time. I'm going back to the 80s here. Mm-hmm. It differentiated from mainstream society because uh, they were discriminated. And, and this happens to any group. If you're discriminated, but not like killed, right? In, in high numbers, it's not that they weren't killed. Some people did get killed for their sexuality at that time period. Uh, you you hide it from mainstream society and then you socialize separately. Mm-hmm. Well, that leads to a different culture forming because you are isolated from the mainstream cultural network. You need to identify how you are different from that cultural network. And then status is to some extent ex- like extracted when you meet someone you've never met but is in the wider cultural network by how much you other yourself from the perspective of mainstream society Mm -hmm. in terms of that cultural network's values and norms this is where you got the gay accent this is where you got and then gays begin to adopt the cultures that a lot of them were coming from or where they would get a lot of early sex from so in gay men this became biker culture which became very important to the gay male aesthetic and then to gay women this became nuns actually a lot of people don't know this but uh, after the second vatican council when the nunneries were moved close to the cities um gay men also disproportionately joined the catholic priesthood but so did gay women this is sort of the catholic cultural solution for same gender relation i think it was 52 percent of of catholic priests are same-sex attracted in one study done and it's and, and, and so the ones who were more gay than Catholic. Let's put it that way. They just happen to be born Catholic and this is what they thought they were supposed to do if they were same-sex attracted. They went into these movements and then in, in, in nunneries, these began to really influence lesbian culture during this period, which you still see in some lesbian aesthetics and common lesbian fetishes. And, and you see this within the gay movement as well. Like, this is why you get something like Road Warrior, which borrowed a lot from gay culture, which borrowed the original Road Warrior, which borrowed a lot from biker culture. And you definitely see this if you're watching the original Road Warrior. This is this definitely came out of gay cultural networks. Um, and then you had some trans people, but trans people were basically non-existent back then. Um, you had cross-dressers, which are different from trans people. The majority of cross-dressers are cisgendered straight males, actually. These are men who like to cross-dress recreationally. Um And transgender people generally found themselves in these networks and you had a few transgender people in the outliers, but they were incredibly rare if you're talking about the formation of early gay culture. 
gay women were the sort of next most rare group. Just the proportion of women who are same sex attracted to only females, when contrasted with the proportion of men who are same sex attracted to only males, it's like 10 men for every woman. This is just like a biological fact. If you look at the statistics, mm -hmm. it is much more common for women to be bisexual or to be interested or aroused by both male and female body shapes in a historic context where same sex attracted is heavily discriminated against. There just wasn't a reason to join these cultures if you were a bisexual woman because of the cost to you. So a lot of these women just presented as straight where men are usually attracted to only either men or either women and therefore for them to get any sort of arousal pattern they would need to go with men which led to a lot more men being present in these communities in the early days so in the early lgbt community i'd say that there were probably you know due to the rounding era of trans individuals and uh bisexual women who appeared in these movements I, I, probably 10 gay men for every one other person in the movement. Meaning this is, this is a very, very, very big and significant proportion of the community. This is a very big, significant portion of the community. So yeah. when the rainbow flag was invented, when people were dying, when people were fighting. Well, they when called it the gay pride flag. They didn't call it the LGBT flag. They called it the gay. It was a gay pride. Flag. Yeah, it was a gay pride flag. And it was the gay pride parade also. Yeah, this was about gay men and everyone else was sort of along for the ride because they had the they similarity. They were a numerical minority. Yeah, and well, and they had the similarity. The only thing they had in common, like their sexualities, I don't think transness is particularly related to gayness or lesbians. I think that they just had the similarity that they were rejected from mainstream society due to something that was abnormal about their gender pattern mm. in the same way that you know if you if you look historically right they would have called like trans people gay and stuff like that right like to define your group by the people who hate you seems really weird to me but this is just culturally they were all sort of in the same bucket for this reason well I, you could it, malcolm think of it this way the pronatalist movement is comprised of many very different groups but we're aligned in our interest in having cultural freedom and you could argue perhaps that's what brought these groups together is they wanted to be aligned in their sexual freedom yeah, to do what they wanted to, which mm -hmm. is is not where the movement has gone, but we'll talk about that in a second. So gay men fought and died predominantly to get this movement accepted. And it is twisted that now the LGBT flag, whatever it's become, which is over time erased gay men from it, has uh, they vote 45%. People may not know this. In the last election cycle, gay men voted 45% for Trump, that this- That blew my mind, by the way, because- Identity and flag that so many of them fought and died for is being used to represent ultra progressive culture to a complete abandon for the effect it's having on these actual communities. Imagine, imagine if you strongly identified with something like, you know, Catholicism or whatever, right? And there was a group of absolute, like, progressive extremist, fascist, racist, because most ultra progressives are fascist and racist. Now, of course, they <laughs> redefine racism. They say it's not racism if you're targeting white people. It's not fascism if you're targeting people who aren't progressive. You know, this is genuinely the way that, of course, when 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 you approach a Nazi and you're like these things you're doing to Jews are really dehumanizing. Oh, don't worry, they're not humans. <laughs> this is always what fascist racist groups do: have taken over their movement and their identity along with that movement, right? Like this larger gay identity that they did so much to normalize. The, the progressives did nothing, nothing to normalize this. They left this group in the cold. The first presidential candidate who, when elected, publicly supported gay individuals and gay marriage was Trump. Obama was against gay marriage when he was first elected. I want to be absolutely clear about that. The progressives did not a fucking thing for this community. They have always treated them as an in-their-pocket voter, and it makes absolute sense that the gay men who actually had to suffer for the rise of this community are fucking livid 
with where things had been taken. And people who knew these individuals back in the day, back when the community was rioting, would have just as much anger about not just taking over this identity, but progressively erasing them from their own flag? What the? F are you it's worse than that. Glad has now one of the primary gay rights organizations. They have a book of like approved and disapproved words or language, which is so Orwellian. But anyway, in their latest iteration, the word homosexual is now considered an offensive term, which is hilarious because they use terms like queer all the time, which was originally designed as primarily a pejorative term, whereas homosexual was a descriptive term for gay men, but they have erased the only word for gay men. They can say, oh, well, you can call them gay now or gay men now, but they've literally erased being able to say that males are gay exclusively or describe them as a specific demographic. Yeah, it's, we, it's interesting because we, we have gay friends who have lived long enough to not have only grown up with woke you know, mm -hmm. who are, who are older than us. And some are conservative now. Yes. 100%. And they see how society has gone off the rails, but then there are others who are still staunchly progressive. And I wonder if it's just that they're not really looking into things. Part of me thinks that I think a lot of the people who are progressive and living in the Bay area, you and I were talking about this earlier. I don't think, I think the issue is that they just don't know what's going on. Well, they don't I mean, realize. I, what, no, no, Simone, 45% of gay men voted for Trump. Okay. Yeah, they know largely the cultural knows there's a few brainwashed people, but gay men have always been some of the first to question cultural norms. Yeah. That is why they produce art at a higher rate. And they just do like across societies. Oh, but it's 45% of gay men voted for Trump, not 90%. What's for going now, on with that? Other you know, half. that a lot aren't brainwashed, that a lot aren't maybe even falsely identifying as gay men. No, this is you know some sort of status thing. Was in come on, Simone, be realistic. You know, there, there there's a lot of men who are like, well, I'm gay because I'm like demisexual, and that's a form of you know gender queer, which is within the gay label. You know, be realistic here. But mm. I also want to point out here what they did to the flag, because this has always <laughs> like been so fucked up. The Which used to be called just the gay pride flag. First, yeah, this was the gay pride flag. And then the rainbow flag was not about, like it wasn't like each color represented some sexuality. It was rainbow because it was everyone the under the rainbow. All the colors. It was about everyone. The individual colors not representing anything specific was about representing everyone everyone mm -hmm. and yes a few groups later tried to identify oh this color means this and this color means this but historically when it was created no that's not what it was about it was about total inclusivity to add some clarification here the colors while they do not represent sexualities they do represent things specifically pink meant sex red meant life orange meant healing yellow meant sunlight green meant nature turquoise meant magic slash art indigo meant serenity and violet meant spirit the pink stripe was taken out later because it was difficult to source the fabric from it but yeah uh, they they definitely were not representative. It's not like one of these was gay people or something like that. The entire point of the flag was inclusivity, and that is what progressives are erasing. Yeah, it was about free sexual you you having the ability to express whatever sexual identity you have. And, and, and yeah. I mean, gayness was the majority of it, so obviously they it called like, it okay. the gay party. But the point yeah. is, is it was be comfortable with who you are. Yeah, everyone is accepted. Is it not fitting that that acceptance has been systemically erased? That's, yeah, actually, when you put it that way, it's pretty wild. As they took over this identity and began to marginalize the actual individuals who fought to normalize all of it. Well, but more than that, that they took away that this is for everyone and they made it into this is it's for these specific some groups. Some people matter more than others. It's, it's so fucking Animal Farm. Wow. It's like somebody came up and they're like, here's this flag for how everyone matters. And then they're like, but some people do matter more than others. Let's put yeah. some stripes on here for black and brown people. Let's put some stripes on here. Let's put a big section on here for the trans community. Even for asexual. And I mean, I, I love it, right? I mean, I'm- you're asexual. asexual at least but yeah. like i i also 
who is asexual? You know, this is not a large portion of the population. Why, why is that there? Why is that there? And as an asexual person, I would say that you are like, why are we erasing in inclusivity, a flag dedicated to inclusivity with a carve out? Yeah. It's fucked up. It is genuinely yeah. fucked up and disturbing the way that the progressives had basically stabbed the gay rights movement in the back and then carved up its corpse and then wear it like some sort of macabre outfit. Oh, look at me. I'm a minority because well, I suddenly makes... and destroyed a minority community. They fought for all this. They've done the same to the black community. <laughs> fucking horrifying. It, horrifying. It, well, and it makes the flag also now so much less inclusive because it sort of means that all these other orientations and kinks can no longer count under it because <laughs> they're not listed anymore. Man. Yeah. Hadn't thought about it that way. So also the same with black men. The people who in a large part create modern black culture, I hate to say it, have been erased. Those men if you say, oh, I vote for Trump, remember Biden, if you don't vote for, for me, you ain't you black. Ain't black yeah. The policing of the black identity card by the Democrats is fucking disgusting. And it's the same that we've seen with the, the gay community. They have taken their community, their identity away from them and said, this identity supports us. And mm. if you don't support us, then you no longer have ownership over your own identity over your own struggles. I mean, imagine whether you're a gay man or a black man growing up, right? Undergoing all of this discrimination and now being told, oh, well, none of that mattered because you don't really have ownership over any of that. The totalitarianness, the imperialism, the fascism of the Democrat mind is disgusting to me. And as you could tell, as people with a ton of black friends, a ton of gay friends, like this is actually repugnant. Repugnant what's happened. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. I mean, to a certain extent, I, I kind of get the the feeling that a lot of gay communities just don't they don't need it because they're quite fine on their own. Thank you very much. And they don't need it. Sorry, it doesn't matter what they need or what they don't need. Imagine somebody took a part of your identity, something that was core to you. Well, and then, yeah, I guess started selling it to other people. That's where it gets it gets. No, no, no. Gross. And they started using it to represent their own goodness. They're yeah. like, look at how great I am. Okay, like imagine this. It's, it's, yeah, it's like project. using your credit report to apply for credit or something. Using your reputation to try to move things forward or cop like plagiarizing your college essay and submitting it. No, no, it. no. It's so much worse than that. It's like a group, right, that did something super racist or terrible, i.e., like, let's take a group that, like, was known for, like, brutalizing Native American communities, keeping them in camps, everything like that, mm -hmm. and then arguing to everyone that they were such a good person and such good people because of how many gays they had converted to, not gays, how many Native Americans they had helped find Jesus <laughs> and that they're really the number one champions of the Native American community because all of these Native Americans that helped find Jesus and all of them that hadn't found or identified with their culture were evil. And then they became the major voice of Native American quote unquote rights in society. Hmm. And then they begin to any Native American that was like, well, we don't agree with your whole Jesus thing. They're like, well, I guess you're not really human and you're definitely not Native American. Do you understand how much that would like mess up someone yeah, to be like a young out. person growing up and seeing that, to see that degree of cultural imperialism and bigotry? And I think that this is also a lot of these dumb, pathetic, Pathetic conservative men these days who don't have any knowledge of history think that they need to be like anti-gay or anti-black to be conservative. And I see this today. It's, really? They're these loud people online. They're, they're not actually part of the conservative movement. As we pointed out, until Obama was elected president, your average white Democrat voter was less likely to say they would vote a black person president than your average white conservative. Even till today, the difference in racism between the two parties is like two to three percent. There is no racist conservative base. The the amount of people who try to front racism or homophobia as core to their conservative identity and just end up looking foolish because historically this is not part of the conservative movement. In modern times, this is not a conservative base. They are just little 4chan kids looking for acceptance. And a lot of 4chan is good. What I mean by this is little people who 
are not 4chan contributors, but just watch other people post there and try to decide how they would fit in in this world framework that doesn't actually exist and then go to other platforms where they do feel safe because they're too scared to post on like the real generator of online culture and then post racist shit on youtube or homophobic shit on youtube and they don't realize that no the majority of conservatives don't agree with them the the and i'm talking real extremist conservatives don't agree with them they think that they're pathetic and that in truth, our movement is one of diversity. It is, and I think in the next election cycle, the majority of gay males. It's it is the people who see, like, actually... Uh, the stats previously showed a little bit less than half, but you think it's basically just gotten worse, just like we've seen with many Latin American groups that are just seeing themselves being completely left behind by the Democratic Party in policies and in behavior, right? So you just think it's just a bigger proportion now, probably the majority? Yeah. Mm. I do think it'll be the majority. And if it's not this election cycle, it'll be the next one. Because mm -hmm. these are the groups who understand oppression. Yeah. You know, th these are the people who fought for all of these rights. To have everything they fought and died for co-opted by a movement that they, one, don't agree with and is fundamentally against their value set is horrifying. Sorry, I might be getting a little emotional in this, but that's because these are communities that I care about. And I can't imagine what it must feel like to be a member of one of these communities, especially one who sacrificed so much. And then to have everything that you fought for co-opted by people who left you to fight alone until they could use your identity to elevate their own social status and move forward this mimetic virus that is destroying our society and that needs to be quarantined and erased. You know, Sweet Baby Inc., I've been watching more stuff about them recently and, and this whole Gamergate 2 thing. And they're like, oh, you know, we're just trying to diversify games. And by diversify games, they mean make them ultra progressive. Right? And, and Which is really homogenizing. Is a racist. And it doesn't right. matter the color of your skin. If you're... <laughs> You know, I was watching Clownfish TV recently. and they're talking about one of the most famous comic artists these days, any comic artist who's really against wokeness is a black guy. They don't care. They don't care because you lose. They, it's not actually about race to them. It, in fact, it's almost the antithesis. Like they are the epitome of racism in our society and homophobia in our society, given the way that they have brutalized these communities. Ugh, depressing. And their, their history and identity. But I'm wondering if you had any closing thoughts here, Simone. What I find to be encouraging is that I think that these communities are uniquely resilient. There's a reason why the progressive left has really tried to take them over because they had created something of immense power and goodness. And I think now that they're kind of back to a new zone without necessarily the same home that they'd already created, that their home has been appropriated and taken away from them in terms of advocacy, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I still have every confidence that they're going to be just fine because they're smart, they're resourceful, and these movements did get big under their watch. Now they're being destroyed, of course, but they'll create new subcultures, new movements, and they're going to be just fine because honestly, these are incredibly resilient groups of people. They're incredibly smart and resourceful and they've only made it this far and they've only normalized different from historical societal sexual preferences because they've been that good. So I don't think it's hopeless. I think it's incredibly gross what has happened. And I see your disgust and totally identify with it. But I'm also always of the mindset that the the fit shall win. And they are the fit. They shall win. Well, I mean, the gay men still are the primary generators of new cultural ideas in our society. The rest of the LGBT movement has never really generated you know, durable new cultural ideas. But as I mean, new. And, and so as these new people of the 
now dissident class, which is considered the intellectually dissident class, which is now conservative. I think the generative gaiman will continue, as, as you say, to to play this major role in society. Same with, with black men, right? Like, who's the number one conservative after Trump? Kanye, right? Like, in, in terms of public mind share, even, even somehow more horrible than Trump. I'm sure he's not considered black by progressives. But the other thing I wanted to note is that in many ways, this stealing of their identity and then transforming it, the reconstruction of the pride flag is a gift to the real gay community, the old gay community. And that now, and we were saying this, you know, we were at the uh, the last log, Reco log cabin Republicans meeting at Mar-a-Lago. It's actually the first time we saw Trump. And this group, the joke I kept saying is I love that we can now fly the rainbow pride flag and be seen as conservative and dissident when before. You mean the original gay pride flag? Yeah, yeah. Before, yeah. if you it was like signaling that you're a progressive. Now <laughs> you fly the original flag and you're signaling that you support the real. You know, it's, yeah, community. it's like practically flying a Trump flag or a let's go Brandon flag. <laughs> and I love oh, it. Edgy, edgy. <sighs> so weird. Yeah, but again they're they're going to be fine because mm -hmm. you know the the best win in the end and i i think gay culture is incredible and resilient and it always has been so you know at least we're starting from a better starting point where you know people aren't being at least in our culture killed or jailed or hormonally sterilized once they're found to be whoa, whoa, whoa. People oh. in our culture aren't being hormonally sterilized Oops. once they're found to be. There's more les lesbians these How days. How many young gay men do you think have been hormonally sterilized who were confused about their gender identity? Oh, who... oh, okay. Okay. Well, they're not being killed or jailed. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah it's, okay. gonna be it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. I love you. <laughs> oh, by the way, one of my favorite things recently is there was this thing on the trans people who had been killed this last year for trans awareness day no. and it turned out that the the murder rate was lower than the general population oh. Um, oh. And so just to run the numbers on that here is a report complaining that more than 300 trans people killed in 2023 and if you look in the united states they had 31 were killed in the u.s so you can say what percent of the u.s population is trans it's about one percent these days which means there's about three million trans people in the united states and so if you say okay 31 people murdered in a three million population that brings the murder rate to 0 0.00001 in the trans community um, versus the general population, which would be 0 0.0063. So it's literally orders of magnitude lower than the general population. <laughs> Almost none of them were killed for being oh, trans. It was oh. all like they had robbed from They've someone. They've been mugged or, they, or something? Or... No, no, no. It was mostly oh, they shit had they had done to other people. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> um, oh, no, no, no. Oh, bad luck. Bad luck. They should anyway, never publish those stats. Love you to death, Simone. I love you too. <laughs> Oh, God. I didn't know that. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, 